This week on Inside Boulder News, the city unveils free public Wi-Fi in the downtown Civic area. Siren testing marks the beginning of peak flood risk season. And city council supports a new ordinance that will allow residents to produce and share more local foods. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Ashley Prill. If the warm temperatures, blooming trees, and tulips weren't enough to make you want to get out of your office, the city debuted free public Wi-Fi in the downtown Civic area this week. Connect Boulder is the name of the new network, and it's an important step towards enhancing the Civic area and raising the technology bar in Boulder. This is the first of what we hope will be very innovative projects in the future to bring better digital connectivity to the community. This project brings uh, Wi-Fi access to the entire civic area from 13th Street up to the front of the Boulder Library. So any green spaces that exist in that vicinity, we've worked very hard to provide great open public Wi-Fi in. And this is really an acknowledgement of the great support we got uh, from the community last November through the passage of Ballot Initiative 2C, which exempts the city from state laws that preclude us from doing projects like this. So this is very much a thank you to the community. It's something that we think will be very beneficial to the future of the civic area as well. Now that Connect Boulder is up and running, the city plans to scope out other spots for free public Wi-Fi and is exploring ways to bring low-cost, high-speed broadband to Boulder's residents, visitors, and employers. More information can be found at connectboulder.net. With spring runoff comes peak flood season in Boulder. To make sure all warning systems are working properly, emergency sirens were tested countywide this week. The sirens are tested annually on the first Monday of each month from April to August. So right after uh, the September 2013 flood, we had a lot of damage in our creek beds and a lot of sediment. Uh, in our creeks that really took away some capacity capability to carry the, the uh, spring runoff and then of course there were injuries to the creek beds that would allow water to escape. So throughout 2014 though by that flood season everyone remembers we had everything pretty much cleaned up and that was really what we were trying to do was make sure that the rivers and creeks were safe before we had spring runoff last year. They did perform pretty well so we, we're still seeing that there hasn't been a lot of damage since then to the creek so we're expecting that we're going to have the same sort of uh, stability within those creek beds this year provided that the spring runoff stays normal and what we're seeing right now from our snow mounts is we're about 95 percent of normal so this is actually the first time in a couple years where our snowpack is less than it has been in previous years so we're not seeing that kind of initial worry that we have an unseasonal high snowpack so what it means we'll get a normal spring runoff like we see every year, the dangers with spring runoffs, if we get a thunderstorm that happens and puts extra water in those creeks or riverbeds, that is a situation that can cause a flood. Uh, we, we monitor those thunderstorms, we try to stay on top of that, and we will. So uh, if we see that kind of situation happening, we're gonna notify our police and fire commanders and make sure that they're, they're ready to take advance uh, action and, and get warnings out to the public if we do see a danger to the community. The sirens may be an excellent outdoor warning system, but they aren't designed to warn those who are indoors of flood danger. To sign up for Boulder's emergency telephone notification system, visit boco911alert.com. For information about personal preparedness and flood safety, visit boulderfloodinfo.net. City Council unanimously supported an ordinance this week that allows people to sell both cottage foods and fresh produce from their homes. With this new ordinance, you will be allowed to sell fresh produce that you produce on your premises to your neighbors or to people who come by. And there are some limitations. One is that you can't be cutting it up. That's food preparation and it creates problems. So it has to be just a harvest cut get it out of the ground, rinse off the uh, soil and the, and the debris, and then you can sell it. You also need to get a sales tax license from the city. And then there's cottage foods, which is actually a separate item. And that refers to those minimally processed items, such as jams or eggs from a chicken that you might have in your yard or honey from bees that you might keep on your yard. The Cottage Foods Ordinance was approved on a second reading, but due to an amendment, it will need to go to a third reading. It's expected to be approved at the next city council meeting. The city is supportive of this for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, it's in furtherance of the city's local foods goals. So basically, it encourages people 
to produce more local foods and to take advantage of the food that they're already producing by sharing it with their neighbors. So that's certainly in furtherance of the city's goals of promoting health, uh, keeping money in the, in the uh, community, basically building community ties as well. Community members interested in taking advantage of the new Cottage Foods Ordinance will still need to comply with state and county laws. For a complete list of allowed and prohibited foods, labeling and training requirements, visit the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment website. Throughout this summer and into the fall, the City of Boulder is working to identify specific tools and community priorities related to Boulder's housing challenges. The Housing Boulder Project gives community members several ways to share their perspectives, including using a computer, tablet, or smartphone to answer questions at housingboulder.net. In the coming weeks, later this spring, we'll also have the option to allow people to text in their answers to these same questions and additional rounds of questions using their cell phone. We want to encourage as many people as possible to get involved and share their perspective. Only when we have a truly representative reporting from the Boulder community can we be begin to understand some of Boulder's housing challenges better, identify community priorities for helping to address those challenges. Another option is to attend the Fresh Perspectives on Housing Boulder speaker panel on Monday, April 27th. From 6 to 8 p.m., you'll have the chance to learn from other communities' housing experiences and also discuss Boulder's housing challenges. Digital and written responses from the Housing Boulder project will be consolidated in May. Results will help guide future community engagement efforts, especially with residents who are members of underrepresented communities. City of Boulder Wildland firefighters went through annual recertification training this week. Wildland firefighters are responsible for addressing the threat of wildfire on about 60,000 acres of public lands and watershed owned by the city. Today these guys are, are doing what's called the work capacity test or the pack test we like to call it. It's uh, 45 pounds, um, 3 miles and they have to do it in under 45 minutes and 45 seconds. It is what's required from the federal government basically to say that we're fit enough to do the job of wildland firefighting. When we go out into the woods for a wildland fire, we can go up to 24 hours at a time on a shift. And when you're out in the woods, you have to carry everything you need to, to maintain that shift and that work. So we carry food, water, all of our gear, um, extra tools, all those things in our packs. So our packs typically weigh anywhere from 30 to 50 pounds, depending on what kind of situation we're going into. So having that ability to know that people can carry weight over distance is, is what's testing their, their capacity to do the job. In addition to the pack test, firefighters review lessons learned from fires across the country and also practice shelter deployment. The fire shelter is a, a required piece of equipment we carry on our gear, it weighs about eight pounds and it's for when things go horribly wrong, you can get in that and, and seek refuge from, from fire. It's a last ditch effort. If, if you're pulling that piece of equipment out of your gear, there have been a lot of mistakes made, a lot of poor decisions made, or, or you've gotten yourself into a situation you shouldn't be in, but it is proven reliable in the right conditions. But you know, the, the best bet is to not ever use it, but in case you do, you have to know how. This summer, for the first time in the program's 25-year history, wildland firefighters will have their own headquarters. Station 8 is expected to open soon. Between our undersized facilities, headquarters, and, and another storage facility, all of our things were in three different places. So for any of our daily operations, it was a, a multi-stop issue to try to just get the right equipment we needed for the day. So this is going to put everybody and all of our things in one place to help make us a more efficient operation. For more information about the Wildland Fire Program, how to keep your home safe, and wildfire preparedness, visit the city's website. Over a year in the making, the Boulder Public Library is celebrating the completion of the main library renovation this Saturday. The celebration kicks off with drummers and a ribbon cutting at 9.30 a.m. and will continue with a variety of children's activities, performances, and more until 6 p.m. The event is free and open to the public. For a full schedule of the day's events, visit boulderlibrary.org slash the main event. Thanks for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.